Hey, everybody. Welcome to Signals from the Frontline, your every Wednesday live broadcast brought to you by Frontline Gaming. Check out FrontlineGaming.org to get your discounted models, terrain, mats, hobby supplies, uh, you know, MDF. I hear that stuff is hard to come by now. It's like <laughs> Lumber. crack. Lumber. Yes, I am. Lumber. I am uh, Seth, uh, one of your hosts, and I'm joined by, if I can point in the right direction, Kicker, our FLG insider, Boom. and Shelby. Shelby, Shelby the hobbyist. Oh, that's not working well. Shelby the hobbyist. Hey, how y'all doing? How's your week been? Hey, guys. Um, well, I decided to try and celebrate the 4th of July by feeding my child a bunch of blueberries. And I just want to share that uh, baby blueberry poop is disgusting. So, um, yeah, that was my experience. So you counteracted it with a large amount of French fries? <laughs> yeah, exactly. We figured balance out the healthy blueberries with French fries. So my child ate nothing but blueberries and French fries for the past uh, about week or so. So that's Every my Every single... Every time people talk about their children, I'm just like, yeah, man, children. <laughs> Sounds great. Cool story, bro. Cool story. <laughs> well, 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 Shelby, what have you been up to? Um, I have been working up the courage. I'm, I ha I bought the Lord of Change in an attempt to get myself psyched up for oh, a Zine wow. Army so that I could play Age of Sigmar. I, I realize now that may have been a bad place to start. <laughs> That's uh, a big model. Yeah. A, so, yeah. so if time. anybody, I'm kind of scared to start painting it other than like priming it. If anybody has any hot tips and tricks for somebody who's never painted a large model like that, that doesn't include um, an airbrush. So Ooh. like, just throw that out the window. Uh, that would I be mean, great. you do have access to an airbrush. Well, you, Shelby, you yeah, also have but, access to a friend right next to you, Seth, no, who seems I'm to paint all it. your stuff. Oh, you're I'm painting gonna this. I'm going to do it. It's, okay. my, it's my Lord of Change. He's going to be pretty and not look like <laughs> shit. I mean, garbage. I'm so sorry. Right. James um, says try contrast. Anyways, I will try contrast. Thank you, James. Um, but yeah, other than that, I feel a little bit under the weather. So if I'm not like all in tonight, that's why. Otherwise, Seth. She, she'll breathe more this episode, everyone. We promise. <laughs> no. no. Um, so for, for for me, I just finished up a uh, big unit of uh, War Bikers for Orcs. Um, I watched the show on Amazon, Invincible. Has anyone watched that? Yeah. No. Is it good? It was, it was fantastic. It's real spicy. Why. Yeah. Ooh. It's totally awesome. Um, and then I've just been kind of, you know, saving my hobby dollars, trying to get ready for uh, the big orc release um, and get prepped for Charity Hammer. So I've, I've talked about it on a few other places, but I don't think I've talked about it here yet. Um, my, I, I will be at Charity Hammer. Uh, Danny and John from Grim After Dark will be there. Uh, we're going to have Peter the Falcon there. Um, Kaka. I don't know. Um, Adam Camilleri is going to be doing some of our, our live stream hosting. Um, it's a big charity event. You can find all the details at charityhammer.com. It's August 5th through 8th. Um, it's over 200 hours of streaming. Wow. Um, we'll be doing three streams constantly from Thursday afternoon until Sunday afternoon. Do so, you sleep? Yeah, and shifts. And, and it's um, for charity. So what yep, charity yep. are we supporting? So it supports uh, Child's Play. Anyone heard of Child's Play? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they provide. Uh, if you haven't, they provide uh, games and toys for kids in children's hospitals. But they've also now started branching out and providing uh, games and toys for uh, kids that are in like halfway homes for like battered women. Oh, um, so see. the mom has escaped that situation, and they're they're trying to bring some joy to those kids' lives. So um, I think in the last few years they've raised close to forty thousand dollars in total. Dang. The goal this year is twenty thousand dollars. So um, you can find us there and donate. Um, but all the information is at the website. Colin just uh, just opened that up the last few days. But anyway, now that we've got, how are we doing, uh, Kicker? Why don't you take <laughs> us into the industry news? Well, guys, I have some news for you. The Charizard book, uh, the second one, I think it's the Charizard book part two. Right on. Card on card. Yeah, they just got to just let's just come up. Just call it the Charizard book. It's it's it. that's going up for pre order this weekend. What's weird is that there's not really that many leaks on this yet. You know, normally by this time, at least we have like some you know some you know fuzzy photos or something. So we kind of have a few previews GW has given us, but not much. So we don't really know how impactful this book's going to be. So this weekend up for pre order. Um, but more importantly. And I know this is going to make Seth very, very happy. We've been getting more and more looks at the new orcs, you know, yeah. <laughs> right? Dude, it's yeah. the squigs. The uh, The recent community post was all about squigs, and that made me so happy. Who doesn't like Squ squigs, right? Squigs uh, and mortal wounds. <laughs> yes, all sorts dude. of squigs. Squigs with bombs, squigs with head button sheens, all sorts of squigs. Dude, 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 dude. dude. The, the smash ahead rule, like doing up to four That's mortal dumb. wounds in the charge, like I that just looks amazing. Like that looks like so the most dude. fun rule there is. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah. I will say I'm a little annoyed by these rules. What are you? How are you annoyed? What do you mean? 
Well, I did. I, I filmed a whole video on Monday of like all the breakdown of all the new rules that they've released. And I was like, I'm pretty certain that they're not going to give any more rules for any of the stuff they've already previewed. They're going to give us rules for some of the stuff they haven't previewed yet. Yeah. And then today they were like, hey, remember those squads we've already previewed? Stuff? Here's more rules <laughs> yes. for them. And I'm like, thanks, GW. I'll be going back and refilming that video now. Oh, But dude, it's kind of cool. You, to, you know, those models look so freaking awesome. It's kind of cool to know like a few rules for them. I mean, I'm stoked for the bomb squigs. I mean, who isn't a sucker for a good bomb squig, right? I mean, come on, guys. It's uh, a Gretchen riding a squig with like a <laughs> nail and a bomb. Yeah, it's great. It's the best yeah. bomb ever. I mean, honestly, these rules could totally suck, but I'm sure the models will sell out because they just look so sexy. Um, guys, uh, one. Uh, let's just let's just place our bets now. Is the official GW going to is GW officially going to release the Orc Codex this weekend? They have that big preview. I'm I'm putting my money down that yes, that's the big announcement this weekend. What do you guys think? I mean, it was in the it was in the last paragraph of the oh. of that page. Oh. Oh, well, I think, gonna, sure. I, I think <laughs> they're going to preview it this weekend. Yes. I don't know if they're going to put pre-orders up this weekend. Okay. Um, so I, part of me wants to say yes, because part of me wants that box as soon as Oracle possible. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, the God. realistic part of, of Seth says that the pre-orders probably won't go up till the 17th. Oof. That's what um, I mean. That means and then that means street date of like the 24th, which gives me yeah. a grand total of two weeks to get that crap built, painted, and lists written for uh, Charity Hammer. So, yeah. Oh, man, I'm it's really hoping that it gets released this, I mean, goes up for pre-order this weekend because... Oh, well, I guess next weekend, because we, you know, I was hoping for LSO, we'd have this, but it doesn't look like that's yeah. happening LSLAC. at this point. Yeah, not happening. Jeez. Well, guys, um, we have some, you know, we're, we've we started doing some pretty cool stuff on the Frontline Gaming front. We just released a super custom X-Wing mat that uh, it was made in partnership with the Fly Better podcast. This is like one of the big podcasts in X-Wing. And I know none of us play X-Wing. I mean, Seth, you, Seth, you don't play X-Wing, do you? Shelby? No. Um, no, I was about to say, are you mentioning something other than 40K yeah, on no, this right, podcast, right, right. Kicker? Okay, what so, so is, the, only, <laughs> the only reason I'm saying this is because uh, Frankie, our head honcho, he's the guy at Frontline Gaming that basically runs all the mats in the production, was the one who signed up, signed up to, to start making custom mats that we might be giving away uh, at our event. So this is a custom mat at the, uh, that will be given away for X-Wing at Lone Star Open. But nice. there's nothing to stop us from rolling out these mats as custom prizes and cool, like, I don't know, raffle away items that we can do at LVO or SoCal in the future. So I don't know. It's kind of exciting to start doing stuff like that. Did you guys Thanks. check out the poll? Did you check out the oh, poll? Oh, yes. Yes, yeah. I did. Yeah. And I was super unsurprised with the answer, if I'm being <laughs> totally honest with you. Based on our previous poll about the cost of uh, GTs and various events, I, yes. I kind of figured... I, I uh, well, explain the results of the yes, poll, but yes. I would like to explain. So the my, poll I mean, was posted today on the Frontline Gaming Community Group page, basically asking people that when they're staying at a hotel for a 40K event, what's most important to them? The location, the quality of the hotel, along with the amenities, or the price? And overwhelmingly, guys, it was the price, right? I mean, geez. Uh, what do you vote for, Seth? I, I voted for quality. And, yeah. and everyone out there is going to be like, oh, money bag Seth. He wants to stay in an expensive <laughs> hotel. Uh, no, I, um, I, I have. And, and if you ever need to confirm the story, I can produce witnesses. I have stayed in some really bad hotels at 40K events. Yo. Um, I've stayed in like five men shoved into like a hundred square foot room. Um, I've, I've stayed in a place where I am 90% certain that there was a crack dealer next door to me. Um, there was holes in the roof and strange liquids coming through. <laughs> I, I stayed at that hotel too. <laughs> yeah. And, and, um, look, I'm going to be honest, you know, this is a luxury hobby. This is, I want to go and goof off and relax for a weekend. And if I feel like I might have to sleep with a gun next to me, I'm not having a comfortable night. Um, so, so I'm willing to pay a little bit more to make sure that I have some comfort in my life. I, so my side of that is that I completely understand. And I also love to go somewhere and feel fucking posh while I'm there. Absolutely. But like we're playing 40k five to 10 hours a day. So like, I don't know, I guess I understand everybody saying price because like, honestly, where where are you going to enjoy that money that you spent on yeah. the hotel room? I, I I get it. I will still personally stay at whatever fancy hotel exists because I like <laughs> it and it makes me feel happy. Um, but like I t I completely understand. Yeah, I mean, with me, I'm all about the location. I was really surprised. I thought location would have a stronger pull. I mean, I like to be able to play 40k all day and then literally walk out the front door of the hotel and go to a good restaurant or go check out like you know the local scene. Uh, you, you know, so I don't know. That was something that was important to me, and I really thought it'd be a closer 
you know, battle here, but it looks like everyone yeah. really just wants a cheap hotel. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm with you too. Cheap, too. cheap with an asterisk. You got guys, you don't want to have to leave the hotel and wonder if you picked up herpes. Okay. <laughs> I don't, you don't like need this that. conversation anymore. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, uh, like Dragon Con's the same way. They have those four p pinnacle hotels, and if you can stay in one of those, like, amazing weekend because you're done with whatever Dragon Con events, and you just go up to your room. It's the it's the best. Anyways, sorry, Cougar. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, guys, um, I wanted to remind everyone that it's important that when you go to one of our events, you check in. Now, you don't have to check in, but the advantages of checking in at the registration desk is, guess what? You get swag. What? what? And uh, we have a brand new sponsor just announced for the Lone Star Open, Rex's Laser. They're going to be doing some really cool custom stuff uh, that will be given out to attendees that check in. It's going to be one of those, like, uh, while supplies last kind of situations, first come, first serve. So if you, you show up and there's nothing there, it's because you were too slow. Um, but they're doing some pretty cool custom Lone Star Open branded stuff. I don't want to tell you just what it is, but it, but it's worth getting in line for it and checking in. Um, you know, this also T Rex with the laser. Above yeah, right. The, yes. We have their logo. If you're watching at home right now, I mean, if you're driving and not watching, you should never watch TV while you drive. That's just not safe. Um, but if you're driving right now, you're missing out on our Rex's Lasers uh, logo, which is a T Rex. I think shooting a laser beam out of its face or something yeah, looks yeah. like it sharks with freaking lasers <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah that's actually why you should listen to signals every single week because we'll give you the inside scoop so yes at lone star open make sure to register uh check in just say hi pick up your challenge coin which we do have one for every attendee but uh you can also get the the limited swag that we have there the uh, uh, hosts of certain podcasts get challenge coins even if sadly seth as much as i love you you cannot get a challenge coin unless you are going to be at lone star open which you should that be but i think you're that. bailing on me aren't you mm. yeah i have to buy a lot of orcs okay <laughs> guys do you remember a, a couple weeks of... ago whenever we were on the show and seth was like oh looks like i'm gonna go to lone star <laughs> open and i guess in those two weeks i don't know I money calculated happens. how much money I need to spend on orcs. <laughs> right. And the answer was a lot. Um, moving right along, guys, Lone Star Open's roster will be getting uploaded to BCP within the next day or so. So once that's done, make sure to log into BCP. Make sure your name's there. If it's not, email us. Say, hey, I'm, you know, I paid for my ticket. I'm not registered. We'll score you away. Um, but with that said, remember, guys, deadline is July 16th for your list to be uploaded or else you get a yellow card so basically uploading list this week uh, i mean we're uploading the roster this week you can check that you're on there and then get your list ready and submitted um also we've been getting a lot of traffic and, and and you know people emailing us regarding the las vegas team tournament and asking about about the coaches um and how coaches are going to be i guess involved at this five-man event the official statement from Frontline Gaming is that coaches are there basically to assist at the strategic level stuff. They're going to help with pairings. They're going to let the team members know how the, their team is doing overall. They can call judges. They can grab water. They can massage you. They can do all that fun stuff. Um, but they're not there to help you with tactical play um, during the middle of a game. They're Think of them more as like support staff. I was about to say, that sounds less and less like a coach. <laughs> well, so that's usually their, their role at most big events. Now, uh, okay. Kicker, this is a very yeah. important question uh, for personal reasons. Okay. If someone... Uh, uh, were say to eat um, absolutely an insane amount of meat at a uh, <laughs> Brazilian steakhouse. Is this a personal um, experience? Just follow me here on this right, hypothetical, right, okay, right, buddy? Right, right. So, if someone were to eat an insane amount of meat at a Brazilian steakhouse while at the team tournament, and he suffered, um, we'll call it a, a gastrointestinal crisis. <laughs> And he had to step away during his opponent's turn. Could the coach maybe step in and like roll saves for him or something while while this individual was dealing with this gastrointestinal crisis? Uh, was he dealing with a gastrointestinal crisis off site? Like, is he you know in the corner there vomiting or you know just like ten place? minutes to run to the bathroom and, and okay. sort this out and then? So he is going to come back. He's going to come back. Yes, yes. I, I think at that you know. At that particular situation, I think we can allow it to, to for the coach to step in and, and roll some dice uh, purely on a temporary basis. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think we can make that happen. Yeah. Uh, also, just don't eat a lot of meat during the middle of a tournament or right before a tournament because it's not worth it. <laughs> All right, it. Kicker, we're going to have to have a talk about what I'm doing at Las Vegas eventually, <laughs> but not tonight. Um, but right, yeah, I think right, the coaching right. idea is a great idea because, I mean, you Shelby, we were set a small team event, but there's a lot going on. And if that, you know, that we didn't have a lunch break on our second day. So if I didn't get yeah, done with it. my game earlier to run out and grab, like, 
when we were at AC or ATC years ago, we were like, oh, we're not going to get much of a lunch break. We all like literally like took cash and put it in the, one of our, our friends teams coaches hand and was like, go to Chick-fil-A mm -hmm. and bring us all lunch back. <laughs> Um, so. Yeah, and I mean, they can also just give you advice, you know, yeah. before, after the round and handle the pairings. And yeah, it's always nice to have another friend at the event. So, so yeah. Plus, that's if you want to go and not play and just, you know, support your friends, that's a great what? role. Exactly. What? Yeah. You, you can cheer for your friends. Shelby. You can root what? for them. <laughs> um, hey, uh, guys, also very important news. Uh, surf's up, dude. Sorry, that oh, was God. terrible. That was oh, great. my God. Yeah, right. No. Uh, oh, the and that was the last episode of Signals from the Frontline. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good fun, everybody. It's been all right, real guys. good. All right, all right, all right. SoCal is happening. It's official. The Express Pass holders, check your email because the SoCal Open is going to be going up for uh, you know sale soon, like very soon. And uh, basically, Express Pass holders should be getting their announcement within the next day or so. Uh, make sure to jump on board quickly because we're pretty sure that event's going to sell out. That's one of the most popular uh, frontline gaming events. Uh, you know, we're expecting at least three hundred players. Uh, but we're probably going to go up to 500. We have the space to go up to 500 for, for this year. So yeah, SoCal Open will be big, big this year. Uh, Seth, Shelby, have you guys ever been to SoCal? Mm, I've nope. never been to California. Oh, <laughs> no. So Okay. Well, this is on the beach, kind of. It's next to the beach. It's gorgeous. It's in San Diego. Oh, outside of San Diego in the Del Mar Fairgrounds. Seth, Ooh. you going to go to SoCal? Maybe. Right, kicker. I, I don't know. I don't you know. know. We gotta. You, know. you and I gotta talk schedule. We All seriously right. do. We, we gotta. We gotta I, I would like schedule. to go to these things. Kicker yeah. is the master of peer pressure here. <laughs> like he's gonna okay. ruin you. No pressure, guys. But if you don't come, we won't be friends. Okay. Uh, frontline gaming news. Uh, Shelby, you want to take it away? Oh, I mean, you, is, are you ready for this? Are you good? I mean, yeah. No, no. This is the, the network. It's page. fine. You just told me that we're not friends. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, I just need a second to recuperate. All right, all right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's fine. Sorry. Um, so there's some cool stuff for you guys to tune into. Uh, last week, Thursday show provided you with a pretty sweet breakdown of some spicy lists over last weekend, as they typically do. Um, and they filled up the rest of their podcast time with something whatever they wanted, I guess. Uh, it was there was a pretty slow week last weekend, and so I think the Thursday showcast took the opportunity to kind of just say whatever they dude, wanted. It's dude, so much fun. Shelby, the Thursday, I mean, like, that show last week was amazing. I have to say, it was actually one of my favorite episodes. I really loved it. They kind of broke down list by list. Um, yeah, really solid show. You guys need to start tuning into that. For sure. I mean, like, the, the, the crew is super solid. They've always yeah. got some great advice. And they also, like, they typically give a breakdown of a list that actually makes sense and provides you a little bit of insight into why certain choices may have been made. If there's ever a list that you look at and you're like, hmm, I don't know how that works or why that would work, they can typically give you a reason why <laughs> and help you understand, uh, like I do all the time. So <laughs> other than the Thursday show yesterday, Grim After Dark uh, aired with our very own this guy, Seth. Um, I'm assuming you talked about orcs. I don't really know what else you would have talked about. I'm assuming just nothing other than orcs. I also decided to challenge John's Hawaiian shirt with my own banana shirt. Uh, I'm well, just well gonna, done. I'm just gonna keep escalating. Well played. Just gonna keep it's going. A game of, of of horrible escalation. Yeah. Other than Seth interviewing with them, I'm not sure what else happened in that episode because I got very distracted by my need to uh, one up John's shirt game. <laughs> you were like, go so, to the closet now. <laughs> it, it was a great time. Um. So, but in the future, obviously tomorrow is the Thursday show. Tune in at nine Eastern, eight o'clock Central because there is some genuinely awesome stuff going down this weekend. There's the mall. The mall is a major, and the Show Me Showdown in Kansas City, uh, which is also a major. So two absolutely absolutely massive events. Um, I don't know if either of them is going to be including the AdMech FAQ. My guess is probably not, but I haven't checked officially. But either way, I'm sure the Thursday show will give you a nice breakdown of some upcoming super cool stuff to look forward to. Um, so check that out. Um, that's basically all I got. What do you guys think? Anything I missed? I mean, the Show Me Showdown, that's a staple in the community. That's a, that's a really big event. So I'm excited to see that happen. And that means a lot. There's a lot of alliterations coming up. Good job. 40K to you. <laughs> all at the mall. Show me showdown. Good times. Good times. Yeah. Yeah. Good <laughs> well job, done. Everyone. Well done, everyone. Uh, Seth, tell us a little bit, speaking of competitive play, who can we look towards uh, for this weekend? Or do you have something interesting to talk about? Yes, I have something interesting to talk about. Yes. I hope. 
<laughs> no more uh, guests. It's, it's, it's the slow issue. time of year. Uh, the 4th of July is not a big weekend for 40K events here uh, in the U.S. because we're celebrating our uh, 4th of July and everyone's barbecuing and having a good time. So um, I thought this was going to be another good week to kind of dig into some of the metas that we don't talk about that much. Um, specifically, uh, I reached out to Tom Adriani uh, and, and wanted to know more about the Belgium meta. Um, and, and Belgium is kind of an interesting meta, and I think it, it feeds well into the topic we were just talking about of teams. Um, they have a few really strong players, um, and I'm going to butcher this. I'm sorry, this Liam, but Liam Vissel, V-S-L is his last name. Um, it's like it's one of their missing strong- letters in his last name. I swear I checked it. Um, <laughs> but he, uh, he's a very accomplished TTS player. He's won a lot of TTS events. Um, he mostly plays like Chaos and Eldar, but Liam doesn't actually have any ITC scores uh, this season. Um because of uh, COVID restrictions, and he's supposed to play it on TTS. Um, Tom estimates they have three Nick Nanavati levels. Um, we're going to call that like Wait, the I'm end sorry, level. What? What? The, are we measuring people in Nick Nanavati? <laughs> yes, we are. Yeah, is that, that a is a measured measurement now. <laughs> he is. How many Nanavatis are you? I'm 0. 0.3. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Um, so their single events are not that largely attended. They usually max out at about 24 players, but. When Belgium runs a team event, they max out at around 120 players oh, on average. Nice. So they're very their team events are way more popular there. In fact, they get a lot of players coming from other countries to come and play in their team events um, with a lot of top WTZ talent. So I thought that was really interesting that it was in Belgium, the teams is the focus, not the singles. That is hey, just uh, the bees knees. Seth, do you know how they do on like the global scale, like the global you know stage, I guess, at the World Trade, uh, you know, the WTC? How does... Belgium do. I mean, are they competitive? Are they up there? You know, I mean, where do they stand? I, I honestly couldn't answer that question, but when we bring our talking head in later, uh, he might know a little bit more about the WTC than I do. Okay, cool. Um, I'm sorry that you asked follow-ups that I can't answer. No, the sorry, I, I, that was not in the I, notes. I am, I am exiled from the podcast. I'm just no, curious. You're not. No, it's okay. Me. Okay. <laughs> just go to sign uh, out. Okay, well, too. Um, so let's talk about our ITC recap. Uh, so we're going to go through that real quick. Um, again, not a lot of movement because uh, there weren't a lot of events going on this past week, and AOS 3 just dropped, so kind of AOS is getting ready to, to refire. Um, but for 40K, your number five is Nick Nadavati. Again, that is our measuring tool for how good you are. Um, <laughs> number four is Mark Hurdle. That would mean he has 1.1 Nick Nadavati's. Um, Brad Chester... <laughs> Uh, so I'll give him a 1.2 Nadavati. Uh, John Lennon. Um, John Lennon lives with Nadavati, so I, I'd give him like a 1.5 Nadavati scale. Oh my God. <laughs> and then uh, number one is Sean Naden. Uh, he's got to be at least two Nadavatis right, right now. Now that, that can fluctuate. He's, he's that can fluctuate. Two Nadavatis. <laughs> yeah, um, that can fluctuate. It's like an ELO score. It can go up and go down as you win or lose. You know. I think this needs to be a running thing, Seth. So please yeah. continue. <laughs> I'll try. Nick I'll Nadavati try. is a currency. Um, for our for our hobby track, number five is Rick Hill. Uh, number four is is Marshall Peterson, number three, Noah Bedom, uh, number two, JT Steger, and number one, Lee Harris. Noah did send in some pictures of his army, uh, an update for the fans, because he got his display board done. Um, I don't know if we can flip over to that, Rich, or do you want me to finish the, the rest of the... Uh-huh. All right, we're going to... We'll finish, and then we'll go back to Noah's stuff, guys. Sweet, sweet, sweet. AOS competitive track again, not a lot of movement on that front. AOS three just dropped. Um, some I don't think many events are going to be firing with it up until probably later this month, right at Lone Star Open. Yeah. Um, number five is No uh, No Aquino. Number four, Daniel Vasquez. Number three, Matt Abbott. Number two, Ramon Silva. And number one, Anthony Trentinelli. Um, And finally, our AOS hobby track. Again, there is a massive tie, as you can see on the screen above me, for second place. Um, Number five being Brendan Dominguez. Number four, Ramon Silva. Number three, Gabriel Pacheco. Number two, Matt Abbott. And number one, Scott Reed. Um, I... AOS guys, Scott's listen to me. In the bag, Look guys. at me. Look at me right here. Okay, you have the best models. Hobby, damn it! I want to see some hobby scores and pictures. <laughs> He's got a point. He's got yeah. a point. So now uh, here oh, we are. So damn. we're going back to Noah's army. So uh, if you guys remember a couple episodes back, we showed you some of Noah's models. Noah has finished his display board. This screen. is. A- can we, yeah, we can, can we describe that display board for the viewers? So, so what you have is AdMech, which uh, which you uh, seem to love, Kicker. Yes, I but do. Uh, uh, they have kind of a subterrane uh, display board going on there, oh, um, and you can actually see some busted up like Necron obelisks down there. Um, I think the we have another of picture. Detail this guy has put into this thing is yeah. ridiculous. Look, look at the top. He's got all these conversions from these like Night Haunt characters in there. My brain is um, 
to, to mesh with his little flappy boys. You can see he's got the little Terminex, like the assault drill. So that's why his army's going from subterranean to above ground. It's pretty cool. Um, he's got some backlight there, a little glow in that old Necron thing that they're busted up and raiding. You can see the little the Magus leading his Skatari down into the tomb to raid wow. and steal and pillage. Um, Guys, so- if you're listening to the podcast, I strongly encourage you to just like hop on the stream at or like the, the, the YouTube upload at some yep. point and like at least come to this spot and check out the pictures because this is insane. Yeah, we're going to have to yeah, post these insane. on the uh, community page. These are just gorgeous. Sure. And it makes me feel like crap, to be honest, because like I no. spent so much time in my army and now I'm seeing this and I'm like, I, I have no chance. You can, like, you, can, you can get there too, Kicker. We believe in you. <laughs> this is the sort of thing that I really want to ask, like just man hours. I really want to know how long <laughs> well, this took you. I'm, I'm going to put a plug in for, for next week because the number one player, Lee Harris, we didn't have time to, to go through. He sent me a bunch of photos. Um, he runs a, a commission like Display Ward Studio. Um, so I can get some more information from him about the time on that kind of stuff. But uh, his army, we'll look at it next week, guys. Um, but yeah, there, there's a lot of work that goes in that kind of stuff to really make those armies pop. So good job on the, the hobby track, guys. Yeah, well done. All right. Well, Shelby, you ready to bring us into our main segment for the evening? I guess I am, guys. I guess I am. So uh, last week, we gave you a little bit of a heads up about who our special guest was going to be. But tonight, we decided to bring in a surprise. Surprise. Um, Definitely not last minute or anything whatsoever. So if you guys would please, please welcome our very (laughs) own floating head, Val Heffelfinger. Guys, be in your best behavior. Here's our boss. Oh, he's got finger guns and everything. Welcome, (laughs) sir. Welcome. Look at those sunglasses. I actually am pretty sure those aren't providing any UV protection. No, none. Actually, I think they dilate your pupils, so that <laughs> makes it even worse. It increases your risk of damage. That's right. Hello, everybody. Hey, what somebody. a nice little show we've got going on here. Isn't it just? Isn't it? <clears throat> Yeah. So, uh, Val, I, at risk of like, you know, just telling people a bunch of stuff they may already know, why don't you right. tell us a little bit about yourself, um, maybe in your position as director or just in other areas of your life? Tell us what All you right. want. All right. So I... Uh, oh, you do ahead. have to tell us what your favorite sugary breakfast cereal is. Yeah, oh my that's God. the important portion of this podcast. <laughs> Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Any other questions? Oh. I'm very respectful choice. All right, there, there we go. Well done. I mean, I'd take an apple cinnamon Cheerio as well. I like a cinnamon. Right. I like a sugary right. cinnamon. That's all my right. uh, that's right. my jam. We can hold um, hands in the park and skip. Okay, cool. I think so. Folks would have heard, would have known me uh, from around the previous lineup of shows, Stats Center. Also, I got I got my podcasting uh, leg up on Chapter Tactics uh, a long time ago, alongside uh, uh, Sean and Jeff and Pablo, and it was um, that for some reason led to me guesting on a billion other shows forge the narrative and uh and and others and uh i guess as the pandemic is winding down i thought to myself uh you know i'd love to just for some reason think i could help produce a bunch of shows for frontline gaming and, I, <laughs> and then for some reason reese uh, was like yeah yeah totally you could do that <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And then, uh, and then, so I've been uh, along with the amazing uh, Richard and all of the people who, for some reason, also thought that we could throw together a bunch of shows and put them on and call it the Frontline Gaming Network. Um, uh, we've been we've been sort of stumbling our way through, and I think I think we've got some good stuff going on. Um, there's there's four shows we brought in. We partnered up with with Dice Check uh, to uh, to carry the mantle of Chapter Tactics and keep that going. It's sort of like the beginners podcast. Um, last night they had, uh, they had, uh, Scary back on as well. He's been on the last two <laughs> weeks. Uh, next week they're going to have Steven box. who's going to come oh, on. Nice. Ooh, um, so, you know, they're bringing in the experts again. I think that was one of the good things about chapter tax. You have people like me on the show didn't really know anything. And then you'd have people who did know stuff <laughs> and that dynamic's for, great because for reference Val, I would rank you at a point to Nanavati. <laughs> <laughs> all right uh it's not bad it's like what, 20, i'm on the scale i'm on the scale i'm not yeah. i'm not You're I'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna scale. you know everyone's talking about elo and glico scores i'm doing the not avati scale yeah Perfect. yeah not Perfect. this uh you know around this network we call it not a body all right oh. 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 network i see you i see you out there <laughs> all right uh, sending, you guys. Sending our best regards friends yeah Heffelfinger um, says hello. Yeah, so um, we. I think if you just want to go ahead and get it out of the way, there's a lot of people who are very much insi- a lot, a couple people, mainly just one person, <laughs> insisting that you say a very particular phrase uh, on air. It has to do with fingers. Pull, pull my Heffelfinger. Yeah. Oof. There we go. That's it. <laughs> That's the show to- title that uh, that that we came up. We workshopped it, and we went with yeah. pull my Heffelfinger, and it was. Uh, <laughs> 
There was a few was options, a but that was the winner. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we yeah. are all a bunch of twelve-year-old children. Yeah, Shelby, yeah. Shelby, very much made fun of us for being twelve-year-old boys. I did. N- I, yeah, I totally did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, we know that you guys are all adjusting to a lot of changes that are being made to the Frontline Gaming Network, um, yeah. and you're you're doing a great job, just bearing with us and being along for the ride. Um, yeah. And because you've been such kind and wonderful watchers and listeners, we decided to drag our new overlord down from whatever castle he may have been hiding in. Uh, uh, we gave him a CGI body just for you guys. That way you could have something to look at other than a floating head. And right. we figured we could get him to answer a few questions up close and personal. So thank you, Val, for being here. Let's see what I can do. All right. For sure. Uh, so honestly, the first question on my mind is, uh, where did the floating head thing come from? Please, please, for the love of God, explain that to me. <laughs> so the floating head, very quickly, well, when we did the uh, the Ocho uh, which actually kind of started all of this uh, delusions of grandeur for me personally, but was, uh, <laughs> was doing uh, coverage for the 2020 Las Vegas Open. And uh, I, the only thing I really wanted was to have a drone, God, and, drone. and fly the drone inside, which we did. <laughs> and we actually had live footage, really terrible, garbled <laughs> live footage, but it worked kind of. And my goal was to actually use that as my perspective, and that I was going to green screen myself on as a servo skull. All right. Um, didn't get to that point, um, yeah, but we did fly the drone, and then after that, um, I, I adopted that as my avatar, the, the serval skull. That is so much better than I ever could have imagined. Yeah. Ever. Yeah. I'm um, just it, so glad you didn't crash that drone into the middle of a game. I don't get. I don't understand how. Like you guys realize, like this. This is a very like advanced technology. Like it. It. It is. It's not just like. It's not like a paper airplane or something. Like, Do you need me to send you a compilation video of people wrecking expensive drones? Because sure. I can find that pretty But that's easily. why I went with the cheapest possible drone. Ah, and, yes. And common know, sense. That um, I just want to say, horrible. Frontline Gaming is not responsible for any reckless drone driving done There's by... no reckless 100%. drone driving, kicker. All right, let's just back off a little bit here. Okay? <laughs> Everybody was all very uh, I, responsible. Well, look, I am very Canadian and raised by a nervous mother, <laughs> so I was very cautious with it. It didn't fly directly over people's heads until I was reasonably sure it wasn't going to hurt people. <laughs> but more importantly, more importantly, the out- waivers. So this is a tiny. I use the I use something called the the DJI Mavic Mini, which is 249 grams, exactly one gram Whoa. below the FAA minimum to require things like a pilot's license. <laughs> um, and uh, <laughs> this is true. You would and, know that. Uh, and because I was very paranoid, I didn't want to break laws. And uh, but the downwash from this thing—it's a tiny, tiny. Like the actual drone was folded up about the size of a of a large cell phone. And uh, the downwash is crazy. It would blow. It would blow like people's lists off of a table if I flew over it. Wow. I couldn't wow. believe it. And it was a good twenty feet in the air. Um, wow. So yeah, drones, everybody. Awesome. Can Are we you going to bring it to LBA we next year? We good. So uh, we, we all done here. Good. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> okay. Yeah, great night. Have a good one. The, Thanks. The, dr- the droning. The droning. <laughs> yeah, that's it. The droning. Uh, are you going to bring it to 2022 LVO? Please, 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 yes. please. Well, uh, it'll be yes. at the it'll be at the LSO. That's for sure. Oh, Ooh. yes. Yeah. I love the Kicker, people. Uh, as know, the event mother. organizer, is this a, is this a, something you approve? Oh, <laughs> I I had no idea this was happening, but it's I am 100 percent on board. It's Texas. He can do whatever he wants. They might shoot it. It's <laughs> Texas. I, like that drone can open carry. It's fine. <laughs> All right, it's. Uh, I'll allow it. Uh, let's, let's do it. Let's let's use Texas as a guinea pig for the drone. Uh, oh gosh. Okay. It, it right. might get let's, shot let's out get of the air. Back on but... track here, guys. There is no uh, track. There were no rails to start with. I'm kidding. Uh, so now, indeed, now that we've gotten the super fun question out of the way, the rest right. are horrible. Um, cool. <laughs> so. Uh, just to you, you mentioned this kind of journey that led you to being the director of the FLG network. Um, so, as we move forward, what sort of vision do you have for the network as a whole? Uh, where do you see it going as we grow and find our our own little niches and comfort zones? Oh, that's deep. Yeah, I think that's that's super awesome. Well, I, I would say that right, the past month has been an extended dress rehearsal, uh, you know, previews, if you will, if if we're doing this in in musical theater. T- terminology um so you know we haven't really leaned into it really hard with a lot of uh you know ads or or really pushing it on people i think we're all the shows are finding their legs some of them are trying to find their shows stat center looking at you <laughs> oh, shoot, that's, <laughs> that's me um, you know, but uh, you know we're, we're kind of like they're all f- fairly ambitious i mean each show has people across north america coming together some using green screens 
you know, we're trying to use interesting backgrounds. We're just trying to make it. I don't know. It's it's more fun when you when you try hard. I feel like that is like a core principle of 40k and 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 tabletop gamers in general. Just is we that all try hard. We just try too hard. And so, you know, we've been we've been succeeding and failing, I think, with all of the shows. And um, and so I think with time, they're going to become more polished and we're going to we're going to sort them out. We're going to get we're going to get the flows down for them. And I think we're going to have a really nice, entertaining lineup that will hopefully ensconce wrap around some really, really great coverage of frontline gaming events. Um, And that starts with the LSO. But the, the goal is to sort of create a little bit of a cycle. So anyone who wants to know what's hip and happening and at least the North American uh, tournament scene. Yeah, sorry, guys. Uh, and, um, you know, because this is where we I've are. I've been trying to give you international news. Yes. Appreciate uh, you. Easy Belgium. Um, you know, so, <laughs> you know, we're, 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 we'll, we'll, I think, be able to create sort of a, a neat thing around that and see if we can get, get an audience. I think we've got some really, really great presenters and creators who are behind these shows, plus Richard, the producer. Um, and it's... Uh, it, I don't know. We'll see. I, I, I'm really, I'm really kind of hopeful, and it's been a lot of fun. So, uh, you know, even if we all crash and burn into the sun, at least we shot for the stars. <laughs> <laughs> I really hope we don't all turn into Icarus. That would make me. That would make me sad. This has been an absolute blast, these, regardless these of what winds are up melty. Happening. I'll tell you, they are <laughs> melty. <laughs> this is fantastic. Um, I I love it, and uh, thank you for giving us a shot. This has been. This yeah. has been pretty awesome. I, you know, yeah. you know who thanks you guys is uh, Reese Richard Robbins. I'm sure is he's off on in like Cube, uh, Cuba, Thank Puerto Rico, you. like with a mai tai in his hand. Yeah. He is just he is uh, chilling, taking back, chilling. I don't think suntan. I don't think he realized he was allowed to take a break, uh, and and now he's got like at least an hour a week where he's just like, <laughs> oh, what, 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 what am I supposed to do now? Like, what's up? Yeah, I'm just gonna yeah. twiddle his thumbs. Yeah, so, uh, uh, yeah. us young guns. Yeah. Uh, so my next question is, um, and let me take a look at my notes here. It's just 40k stat center in like six question marks or something. Yeah. So uh, take it away, Val. First of all, I would really like to thank everyone who seems to be really keen for 40k stat center. <laughs> That's nice. Um, and uh, it's it's cool to be wanted. Pete is ready to go. He's raring to go. Uh, and really, the bottleneck is uh, yours truly, to be honest with you. There's a lot that went into every single episode, and now <laughs> we've added a visual element just because, you know, that's a good idea. Let's make it harder, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And Naturally. so uh, in trying didn't, to do this... Didn't you say trying hard was fun? It yeah, is right? fun. It is fun. But, I mean, the workflow of, of Stat Center before was was kind of fraught, and I don't know if, any, if anyone was keeping score at home. You know, we started releasing it on... I don't know if we ever made it to Monday, but the goal was always Monday. And then it was sort of sometimes Tuesdays and then occasionally <laughs> Wednesdays, then Thursdays, then sometimes Sunday. Like it'd be like, we'd be covering the week, but like it just kept creeping forward. Cause there's just a lot of, it's not necessarily a lot of, a lot of hours and work. It's just, there's a ton of little pieces to it and you're reaching out to folks and trying to get interviews and things. Anyway, I'm making a lot of excuses to say that uh, I bit off a bit more than I can adequately chew uh, and I'm just sort of grinding the network through my molars a little bit, get swallow that gulp, and then we'll get back rolling with the stat center. So it will come back. It's not we're dead. Also, we're working. We're working. Uh, there have been so many people who uh, responded to a call for help as well, a plea for help. We've got <laughs> editors. We've got producers waiting in the wings. Uh, we've got uh, contributors who are signed up and currently very active in a, in a Google chat. So there's, there's definitely a lot of people willing to help and have put their hands up. And it's just been, uh, you know, my uh, my shortcoming in, in actually uh, uh, accepting that help and and getting people um, doing stuff because there's so many people out there that are just 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 help like you guys like you're giving up your time every week to do this show. People are just enthusiastic to to you know talk about and share news about the community or just help out and like do do a little piece of a show and like these people are, have been really awesome and the enthusiasm is incredible and. Uh, Hopefully that means that you know there's there's a there's a couple more people pulling all the levers and cranks behind Stat Center and it can come back and be good. Yeah, that'd be nice if it was yeah. good. I and, would and, really like that. I mean, you and, care about the quality, and I think that says a lot. So, like, that's that's fantastic. And Val, don't beat yourself up too much. I mean, I think well, everyone understands you are running a whole network right now, so it, it makes sense that it's going to take a little bit of time for <laughs> Stat Center to. to, to, to remember to, that I both came up with the the name my my title of creative director. And the fact that this is a network, uh, I don't know if either of those things are true at this point. 
But, um, uh, you know, you actually just raised an interesting point, Shelby, which is we could just do a crappier version of Stat Center for the time being, which is <laughs> not. Isn't that what we're, we're doing? Something we're, we're doing a crappy even, version of Signals for the time being? Yes. <laughs> That is not something that had ever occurred to me until now. We could li- we could literally just do a show where Pete tells you what happens because he's very entertaining and good. And why don't we just do that? There you go. Done. St- Solution st- found st- live on works. signals. This is how that center works. light. I'd like to so just to say like there are, there are a couple of events right now that we have in the can where we're like. Um, uh, there was onslaught GT down in Florida a couple weeks back, and like I literally had the tos like running around getting you b-roll and and some footage and interviews and stuff and like they got it to me in time and then i was like oh i gotta sell my house so like (laughs) yeah i'm sorry to those guys uh who who scrambled and got all that stuff going for me um and then there's uh some other interviews that that pete's got so we got lots of content ready to go uh just gotta gotta get it out the door just get pete his own servo valve that's all yeah just just remember how much people loved you like without any bells and whistles Good uh, point, find that center. I had bumps and stuff. Okay, we we had like, like <laughs> <stadium> <laughs> breaks. Oh, man, you, he was in Val's defense when when Stat Center first premiered. It was one of the more higher production quality uh, podcasts out there. And this being said by the guy that had no production quality in his podcast for many years. <laughs> so on, on the off chance that I got the mix right and it wasn't horrible, horrible sound volumes yes it was it, it, it felt good i tried hard okay dude you did. Okay. Val, you, your, you intro had a big vision. your intro always got me i mean it's like oh okay cool stat center time banner net banner net hey 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 i don't hey, think we hey, can hey, do that on here that. like at all yeah, I don't know whole episodes watch. i'm allowed to perform whatever i want under the creative <laughs> commons license thank you very much uh, i don't know if you guys know so the frontline gaming's logo is a strike through font which is uh like the same same font used in like blade runner and stuff and i I, I called this the FLGN and then uh, and then added just use the same Blade Runner strike through f- font. And then I looked at the ESPN logo and it is the same. It is, it is, <laughs> really? it is really? the same. You can't deny and it's, that. It's plainly obvious. And uh, anyone who's looked at the ESPN logo would have known that. And I have spent many hours looking at that logo so this was a coincidence your honor and uh, <laughs> coincidence. I don't know. uh no foul our point. logo is white on black yeah. hey we're creative i don't there know hey, Done. What? Done. Huh? <laughs> also okay so Your sorry red. time wise uh since we're since the episode is running a little bit long but honestly like i think that's fine because we have val and val's great um so really quickly, guys, if you're in chat and you have like semi-serious or silly questions or whatever that you want to ask Val before he has to head out, please go ahead and get those get those posted. Um, and somebody can can copy paste them in here for me. I'll give you like like two minutes basically yeah. because I do want to ask Val really quickly. Yeah. How has 40k for been for you lately? Like none of this. Have you played? Yeah. Do you have time? What are you even playing? Have you been to a tournament? <laughs> like. Uh- it's interesting. Like I guess around the LVO and uh, around Stat Center, definitely stopped playing much myself. Also, around the time of the original Brown Magic, where, where Nick, Nick Nanavati like started doing coaching and stuff, and people started getting a little more serious, I stopped being able to win any competitive. <laughs> and, and, fun, I, right? and, I, and I stopped being able to uh, add anything intelligent to the conversation. <laughs> so I rapidly tried to pivot into stuff that I could still enjoy without being a complete charlatan. So that was that was basically the goal. To answer your story, uh, your question, played Rich, uh, the producer, uh, at his house while we were testing some uh, stream rigs for the, uh, for the Lone Star Open this nice. past weekend. Played my custom Stampa which apparently Danny thinks is bad for the game. Just, you, know, <laughs> he's, you know what's he's, bad for he's the game? He's on the, the, the narrative podcast. He's not yeah, on the game. You know what's bad for the game? Danny McDivitt. That's what's yeah, bad for the game. Boom. 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 Get, out Get, out Get out of here. Get out of here. Get out of here. Hot take. Um, so, and yeah. then there so was no Grim After Dark next week. I don't, I don't, I don't play it's a ton. I don't, didn't play a ton before. I was, most, of my, most of the games I played were actually at tournaments. But 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 Val, you've always been a diehard orc player, or have you yes. jumped? Yeah, you have. Okay, cool. I sold my Tau, sold my Grey Knights. Yeah. Um. The uh the the Tau are now living in uh, real life Trazen's uh, cabinets in Maryland. <laughs> Anthony Birdsong at Towers and Games or whatever this his uh, ridiculous store is. Um. So yeah, if you ever want to see the most cursed Tau that have ever uh 
traveled right. the planet. Uh, I was going to say, I heard they had a fantastic showing at uh, ETC. Shut up. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, uh, we're, looking, we're interviewing new hosts for Signal from the front line. Uh, <laughs> okay. uh, nice well, you all. Have, a, guys. have a good week. Good week. Just, uh, I'll uh, you know, see you. Continuity is good. Bald and surly would be perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Val, uh, just because I've heard rumors of this, uh, apparently you have a couple giant squiggles with some unique names. What are the names of your uh, your squiggles? Well, the 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 uh, the first one is Peaches, the Z, <laughs> and but that's he's named after my dog. And the other one is Buttercup, but they're too. Oh, that's sweet. That's with a K, obviously. I love them. That's a beautiful. So I'm pretty excited about the new, the new, uh, the new orc stuff because uh, snake, basically, blood axes and snake bites will be the two clans that my collection is nice, the largest, the most. I've most said it before, player. but like I've always wanted to play orcs. It's been a secret, secret wanting of mine, right, yeah. Seth? I'll just borrow your army for. Oh, oh, he mad. Woof, he mad. Okay, moving on. Um, I so just I, really, I really hope there's a low model count option in this codex. That's like, that's why I like the stock. Like, like, like a hundred models. Yeah, that's low. That's yeah. low model count. I, I was playing the mega knob, the mega knob list, which is twenty mega knobs, and it was like, yeah, this is low model count. And then I looked at, it, I'm like, there's friggin' a hundred grots in this list. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Jeez, Louise. Anyway, uh, well, I haven't seen anybody really ask much any questions in the chat or anything. Well, I'm assuming. Chat. Well, well, I mean, definitive. like that's what that's what I am. I'm definitive. You uh, are. There, leave no question unanswered. <laughs> um, this is from yes. All right, cool. Well, no worries. It was going well before, and uh, <laughs> I assume it'll keep going well. Um, <laughs> Thank you so much, Val, for being with us. This has been awesome. And if you guys do have any questions that you want to ask him, just link send them our way, and we'll. I don't know, send or, to him by carrier pigeon. He'll or, get back uh, to us. I, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm an old squeak. man. You can just message me on the old Facebooks, Val Heffelfinger. Yeah, I'm too. the only one uh, that also has a cartoon avatar as their picture. Ah, there is see with Sal there, there is totally one question guy. from from Kelsey. Val, do you have any plans for the future? Oh, wow, that's deep. Uh, well, I mean, immediate. I mean, I don't know. Is it? that dark? Is that a dark question? Yeah. I, I, was that a veiled threat? Um, I, no, I don't I, think I so. Hope to get up tomorrow, uh, kiss and hug my son, and uh, <laughs> carry on uh, uh, with, with great energy and vigor towards uh, the Thursday show. Which is <laughs> kicking butt. If you guys haven't listened to the Thursday show out there, listen to the Thursday show. Because awesome. they thought it was a great name, even though a bunch of jerks. Thursday show. <laughs> really think they are. Kel Kelsey yeah. has clarified. Do you have any future plans for the FLGN? Oh, there we go. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, so thank you, Kelsey. That was actually in one of the original questions. Um, yes. So w the core lineup is, I think, you know, we got we have the five shows. Um, outside of that, we're going to be adding, I think, affiliate shows. And you've already seen that right so far um, with the re-release of 40k Game Changers. Um, so we'll start having more shows on their own independent feeds and they will essentially be, will actually be a network. So they'll, um, you know, plug uh, frontline gaming mats and whatever else they want us to talk about as well as the other shows <laughs> in the network. So that way we're all sort of hopefully giving, uh, you know, uh, amplifying the reach of Brain. each show and, um, and hopefully we'll have, we'll start to fill in different niches. So Hopefully, very soon, we'll see a lore podcast, maybe a hobby podcast. We got some stuff lore. being worked on when my hair is not on fire. Uh, <laughs> excellent. Super awesome. Thank you. Thanks, Seth. Uh, Thanks, where Seth. are we go We're going into the... Uh, are we going to get Val to join us for Rapid Fire Round? Is I that, think he can hang out and watch us sure. our way through oh. this. All right. Sure. That sounds great. Well, Seth, how do you explain how this works? Five minutes on the clock, guys. Five minutes on the clock. I think we can get this done in less than five minutes. I think we can get it done in three. But so we'll see what we in our rapid yeah, fire. Sure, sure. All right. So for uh, those of you that haven't seen this before, don't try uh, these are listener submitted questions over at the uh, Facebook page every week on the Frontline Community Facebook page. Yes. Uh, Kicker puts up a nice little uh, link for you guys to put questions into us. You can ask us anything you want and maybe we'll pick it. Uh, maybe not, Danny. Um, and uh, here we go. So we're going to try to get these done. Wait. All right, there we go. There's We've the got the timer started. Boom. All right, so uh, this is a question for Shelby. Uh, Zach from Pittsburgh says, uh, should some codices be combined into one, Eldar and Dark Eldar, Knights and Chaos Knights, into various Imperial and Chaos codices, Gene Sealer called into Tyranids, Sisters, Custodes, and various Imperium books into one monster book, or am I being silly? Uh, Zach, I don't think that's a silly question at all, as Val is doing a great job up there. Good job. Keep going, buddy. Thank you. Um, 
I, I don't I don't think the question is whether or not we should, because I definitely think that's a yes, because, I, you know, it would be less for, for players to keep up with. They wouldn't have to worry about it so much um, if you wanted to play Eldari and you had all of it in one giant book. Right. Like that would make sense to me. That would. But, but that makes too much sense. Right. Instead, it makes more sense to have it all separated up as much as humanly possible. Um, that way you have to, you know, carry around a bunch of different stuff. I guess we also exist in an, in an addition where like soup is less likely mm. overall. Um, so less necessary, I suppose. Yeah. Just a quick interjection, uh, Shelby. The FLGN style gl- guide clearly says that we use the term multi-faction, not soup. <laughs> <laughs> Do your homework. I mean, so we, are, we are, yeah, we're, on, we're on probation here. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I would love to, Zach. I, but you know, alas, alack. Um, so kicker Benjamin from Maryland says, "Will you publish a standard rubric for Ooh. painting scores?" All right. So you personally. Is- yeah, I mean, like, if this is for frontline gaming events, there is a rubric that we use for, you know, judging your army as a whole. Um, you know, it, we have it on our, you know, we'll post it to the the page. It's pretty standard, nothing too exciting, but there's nothing across the ITC that is kind of in concrete. We kind of let each TO make that decision on uh, for themselves. But that's something we should consider, because I think that'd be kind of cool if there was an ITC kind of standard, I guess. Uh, something we have to discuss internally, but I like it. Um, Seth, I got a question here from Andrew, uh, from Virginia beach. He's asking, will T sun's release help chaos, uh, follow up to that. What cereal would Primarchs eat and does it belong in Chile? Uh, that's a very confusing question. Why don't we take the first one? Does corn we'll- belong in Chile? <laughs> oh, just, just corn. Does cereal yeah. belong in Chile is not the correct way. That I'm was sorry right. guys. I'm thinking about Do cereal. not eat the chili the kicker makes guys. It's going to be... <laughs> An experience, and that's how you get um, your coach to roll your dice for you. I, I mean, I certainly think I think I, my my guess is the design philosophy in terms of uh, GW right now is they're trying to. Chaos was built around being able to use keywords across codexes and do all kinds of shenaniganry. But based off the FAQs that came out in the beginning of June, I think they're trying to go away from that. So I could see the T Suns book boosting up T Suns a lot, but I don't know how much it's going to boost up other Chaos factions. <laughs> As for right. what cereal would the Primarchs eat? I don't know. I'm not the cereal guy. That's, yeah. that's kicker. Save that for next week. I'll answer that. It's cool. Okay. Um, Brother. Brother Val. Then, does corn belong in chili? Uh, when I make it, it does. I, I'm, huh. I am pro corn in chili myself. Pro corn. I, I, am, I am. I am. No. no. Oh, really? Negative Ghost Rider. Uh, There's already Shelby. a lot going on. Shelby, do you got a question for kicker? Oh, I, yeah. I do have a question for kicker. Um, John from Albuquerque asks excitedly, will LSO be streamed? ASO was not. Will there be an Ocho style broadcast? <laughs> well, we have Val I here. You could probably answer it, but I'm going to say yes, it will be streamed. Uh, Val, you want to explain what kind of stream we're going to have at the Lone Star Open? We're going to have an, the evolution of the, the Ocho broadcast. So that was uh, the goal of the Ocho broadcast was to not be tied down to any single table, to have multiple cameras, to move around the event and cover the tournament entirely. And that's exactly what we're going to set out and try yeah. to do at the LSO. Um, we're currently lining up our, uh, our, our broadcast talent. We won't have the same team up there, but we will definitely have the one, the only, Adam Camilleri. Awesome. Uh, that's pretty much all you need. You don't. Yeah, you don't need. Yeah. Him. There's barely enough oxygen on the planet to supply him <laughs> when he's when he's shoutcasting. So, uh, I think we could probably just have a cutout of somebody next to him, so that you know, if he goes to the bathroom, <laughs> no one gets concerned. Um, that kind of thing. Nobody's yeah, concerned. No, we will have LSO uh, coverage. Uh, uh, myself and Rich are actually going down there. Woo woo! Um, nice to, nice. Uh, to oversee it. And, uh, and by the way, if you are going to uh, the Lone Star Open and you are like, you know what, Warhammer, not feeling it. I'd rather run around here like crazy helping Val and Rich run a stream for possibly tens of people. I would, uh, I would, hope, I would wholeheartedly encourage you to uh, reach out to me, Val Heffelfinger, also director at FLGN.org. <laughs> Oh uh, God, that's a that's a flex. There you go. There you go. <laughs> All right. You can and, also use my alternate email, admin at flgn.org. That's, uh, that's five minutes. Dice down. Dice down. Dice down. Dice down. <laughs> Did um, I screw up the game. I I just I talk too much. That's okay. That's okay. Yeah, I want to get yourself off all the shows. I am sorry if we didn't get to your question this week. We will get to we'll, it we, next we'll week. Save guys. it for next time. Yep. Yep. That we will. All right. Well, uh, don't uh, forget to. <laughs> You're fired. <laughs> and we also have a cameo by the Falcon Stop for those watching with my head, Rich. The, the video stream. 
<laughs> Where did he even get that? I don't know. Uh, Sorry, guys, for you listeners, there's a there's a bird not, on my head. I don't <sighs> understand what's the first going time on. there was a bird on my head today. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, don't forget uh, we got Lone Star Open coming up. I think there's still some tickets available. If you got some last minute impulses, is that right, Kicker? Yeah, a few tickets. The hotel is totally sold out. The there are a few 40k tickets left. All right. Um, don't forget to check out the Thursday show. They've got the uh, the mall in the mall and the uh, yeah. show me showdown to preview. So there's going to be a lot of great content. Uh, thank you, El Jefe, our fearless director, uh, for joining us uh, you, today. This was fantastic having you on. We really appreciated it. Richard, uh, thank any, you for running the, the back. As always, yeah. as always. Thank you, Richard. Uh, any final thoughts from anyone else here, including the Falcon? Uh, Chance says, could you please have Seth or Kicker bring back the Reese mustache? <laughs> Do you see this chance? It's 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 red, okay? Like if I shaved it, you you barely would tell I have anything. And uh, true story, I can't grow facial hair, so let's end the, it on that. The best one here would have been Val. I got you covered, and, and he chance. Just, he just yeah. demustached. Yeah, I have I have demustached. Let's see. Uh, let, let's see if I can. Uh, no, there's apparently no. I can't spell mustache, so I can't. <laughs> mustache. <laughs> oh, my mustache. Oh man. All right. Well, uh, if that's it for tonight, uh, thanks everyone for joining us. We really hope you appreciate this episode of Singles from the Frontline. Uh, thanks again, Val, for joining us, uh, Falcon yeah. and Richard. Oh, there it yeah. is. There's a mustache. <laughs> um, and everyone have a great week and see you next Wednesday. Bye, guys. See you later, guys.